Some births give life to classic TV hijinks. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest going into labor scenes in television. I, I don't think the phone booth will fit in an ambulance. <laughs> Can't you hurry up? What are you looking at? It? Haven't yeah. you ever seen a person in a phone booth before? Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at those TV labor moments that don't fill the romanticized ideal and are basing our picks on a mix of bad planning, rotten luck, and just how much each birth went off the rails. I want you to imagine that your uterus is like a tube of toothpaste, and you're just trying to squeeze out all that minty fresh gel. But instead of minty fresh gel inside, there's a little black baby. Number 10, Lily, How I Met Your Mother. Cute me. Mid-birth isn't the best time to suggest baby names. Ending their seventh season on a frantic and packed note, Lily finally goes into labor, but is so stubborn about going to the hospital with Marshall that she refuses to leave until Ted and Robin end up distracting her enough to leave. So what I need right now is distraction from the pain. Just tell me a story. With Marshall trying to get back to Manhattan after being stuck in Atlantic City, he ends up getting Barney's help for the way home, but not without a baby naming condition. The name is, wait for it. <laughs> Arriving in the nick of time, Lily loves the condition, naming their son Marvin Wait For It Erickson. Marvin Wait For It Erickson. That is the coolest middle name of all time. Number 9, Brie and Danielle, Desperate Housewives. I expressly forbid her from coming tonight. Who does she think she is? This isn't exactly the kind of horror you typically associate with a birth. Playing an easily convincing pregnant mom for a Halloween party, Danielle is playing with guests right before Brie throws her out for her own good. You make a scene, ha, that's a laugh. What's wrong? I think my water just broke. A little too late, however, as Danielle's water breaks mid-argument, forcing Brie to act the problem-solving mother instead. Moving houses, they ask Orison to deliver the baby first, before realizing he's both extremely underqualified and very drunk. You're a dentist! What if there are complications? Should an emergency arise, we will simply call an amulet. A what? Ambulance. Finding the best person for the job, Brie grabs Adam, who hobbles over in a Frankenstein outfit, delivering the baby all while in costume to the fright of local children. Baby baby. <laughs> Number 8, Becky, Full House. Hey, everybody, this is it. Becky's ready to have the twins. Going into labor three weeks early at a party, Becky is forced to leave Michelle's Flintstones birthday to go to the hospital. Jess, why don't you just stick a sign on my back that says, Wide Load? Jesse starts freaking out in the waiting room, noticeably pained enough to time his own contraction along with Becky's. Ending up in surgery for appendicitis, he has Danny swap in, who coaches Becky through her birth with a hilarious rendition of We Will Rock You. We will, we will rock you. Sing it. Wheeled back in on anesthesia, Jesse arrives just in time to see his new twins born, while deliriously singing and goofing around on the drugs. Having my baby. Come on, you're doing it. I can see the head. Oh, the Whoa. Shut up. Number seven, looking too much. Everybody loves Raymond. I just, I just thought that since you're a cop, maybe we could, we could walk a little faster, like right through the red lights. Training doesn't always prepare you for the emotions of a situation. Driving a very pregnant Deborah to the hospital, Robert and Ray start fighting as they get stuck in traffic on the bridge. Wait a minute, Robert, which way are you going? This is the LIE. I said to take the bridge. Right as they stop, Deborah's contractions kick into high gear, and they're forced to deliver the baby on the road. Robert takes over with his emergency training, putting himself into an incredibly awkward point of view. Screaming at Ray for his unbearably protective instincts, Deborah tears into him to get Ray under control. Realizing in shock that Deborah's not even giving birth, everyone gets back to their seats in awkward silence. Maybe it's not hurting so much anymore. Well, you stop looking then. Stop looking. <laughs> Number six, Pam, The Office. Why don't I just run you down to the hospital and just do a quick check? Not till midnight. Getting involved can go way too far. When Pam's contractions finally become too much, she tries to call off the whole birth before Jim reassures her to go, with Kevin and Michael getting way too personal with him. Baby. We can have a baby. So let's have it at the hospital. Grabbing their gear, Jim and Pam head to the elevator right as work gets out, with Stanley running to grab the elevator behind them. Hold it. Come on, Stanley. Okay. We're going nope. now. One more. No, 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 no. Out, 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 idiot. Dwight's unnecessary role as escort gets particularly hairy, as he gets pulled over for impersonating a police officer, even throwing away weapons in the process. 
Pulling into the hospital, Michael even takes an ambulance his parking spot. Sir! Gunderman Plum, it's okay. You can't park here. Ah! I just did. Number five, meter running, Frazier. You're pregnant? Yes. Ow! Oh, ha. Oh, well, don't panic, ha. This, it may just be false labor. Hopping in a taxi after Frazier's fancy car breaks down, Martin, Niles, and Frazier stop bickering just in time to talk to their cab driver and discover her water broke. My water just broke. Ah, I'm sitting here in a puddle of water. Cap skip, cap skip. <laughs> Pulling over while trying to save his shoes, Niles takes the first stab at delivering the baby, revealing he fainted in medical school. You fainted? Oh, switch places with me, honey, and see how you do. Oh. Frazier takes over, soothing the driver's breathing down while annoying her with his incessant nitpicking. Not that your lower portion is messy at all. It's quite beautiful, actually. Not that I'm looking. <laughs> Is the pain that bad? No, you're driving me crazy! Oh. Martin finally takes over, clearly the most level-headed and qualified, setting the boys to work before Niles chimes in about their meter. Good, now are there any questions? Yes, should our meter still be running? <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Phoebe, friends. I'm um, Phoebe Buffet and I have babies coming out of me. Phoebe handles being in labor pretty much how she handles everything else, with surprising and remarkable positivity. And now, which of you is the father? Um, no, none of them are the father. The father is my brother. <laughs> Contractions? No problem. Your scheduled doctor can't come? Sure. Your substitute doctor has an affinity for the Fonz? Eh, maybe this won't be so easy. Oh, no, no. Fonzie is the nickname of Arthur Fonzarelli. <laughs> the Fonz. In the end, though, the doc knows what he's doing, even if he has some unorthodox ways to get in the zone to deliver. Phoebe powers through and gives birth to Frank Jr. Jr., Leslie, and Chandler, who turns out to be a girl. Hey, where's his thing? Unfortunately, Rachel's road to childbirth isn't much easier, though she handles it much better than Ross handles a bump to the head. You have no idea how much this hurts. <laughs> Number three, Aunt Viv, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Stop with the damn Pregnancy rarely deals out this much aggression. Annoying her entire family with her incessant bell ringing, Viv brings the entire family together against her. Diva needs to get her butt out of Bel Air a little more often. <laughs> Getting to the hospital ahead of the family, Viv is already ready to deliver when everyone arrives. Running into the rest of his kids, Phil gets directions to Viv and jumps into action so fast that he barrels right over a stretcher, crashing right onto the floor in his frantic stress. Fill me up! <laughs> Number two, Gloria, Modern Family. Surprise. Money, we're so sorry we didn't meant what? to. The only proper way to crash a birthday is with another birthday. After planning a whole party and special day for Manny, Gloria's water breaks in the middle of the events, with Jay saving the day by getting Gloria to the hospital and ordering pizza for the rest of the guests. No way! She peed! Her water broke! As family arrives, they hear screaming and run to what they presume will be a screaming Gloria. Oh my gosh! It's happening! They enter to find Jay screaming as Gloria crushes his hand, and Manny convinces his mom to stop holding the baby in, making a briefly touching moment before understanding his dad's pain when she grabs his hand too. Oh, that's a strong grip. Uh, that's a, that's oh. a, that's a, that's a, oh! Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, her father said! The pain was unbearable. It was the kind of pain that tore through her. Oh, here's your bathing suit. <laughs> This is great. And what a coincidence. I was just thinking how I wanted to put on all my underwear and staple something. Tim, are you sure it's the head? I, I, I think so. It's got a nose on it. <laughs> Number one, no plan. I love Lucy. Ricky, this is it. This is, this this is, is it. This is it. This is it. No matter how much planning you put in, sometimes the universe has other ideas. With Lucy ready to pop at any moment, Ricky is unhinged in his anxiety, quickly roping in Fred and Ethel to his madness. Starting rehearsals for Lucy's birth, Ricky sets everyone a job with Ethel on the phone, Fred carrying her bag and him managing his pained wife. Oblivious to the rehearsals, Lucy comes in ready to go. Put into a frenzy, Ricky is knocked into the couch, having to do all the jobs in one hilarious mess. Ricky even forgets Lucy in the struggle and hurts himself along the way. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.